We want to bring this meeting to order, if you would, please. Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome, Planning Commissioners, to the Planning Commission meeting for April 25th. Uh, let's see, Mr. Garner, if you would, call the roll. Noble? Here. Shelby? Here. Autry? Here. Hopkins? Here. Quinlan? Here. Brown? Here. Cook? Here. Hoffman? Here. Belden? Here. If everybody would make sure you turn on your mics tonight. I know we had some issues with that, me included, last time. And if you would also silence your phones, everyone, please. Okay, um, first up is uh, consent. Uh, number one is approval of the minutes from April 11th meeting. Uh, second is administrative item 16-5403 for 1898 East Mission Boulevard, Whistler Woods. Submitted by Phil Crabtree. Um, is there anybody that wants to pull anything off the consent agenda, or are there any motions? Mr. Chair. Ms. Elby. I'd like to move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Selby and a second from Commissioner Autry. Any other comments? Mr. Garner, if you would call, call the roll. Okay. Noble? Yes. Selby? Yes. Audrey? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Quinlan? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cook? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Eldon? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Let's see. Old business. First up, uh, rezoning 16-5366 for the northeast corner of Gregg Avenue and Van Ash. Uh, this is CNN Business Park, submitted by McClellan Engineers. Um, Mr. Thompson has this, but I think we're also looking to table this item, if, if that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Chair, the applicant has requested the item to be tabled for the next two weeks. Okay. Sounds good. Um, in that case, I'll entertain a motion to table the item for two weeks. So moved. Okay, we have a motion. Second. A second. Okay, a motion from Ms. Belvin and a second from Ms. Selby. Any other comments? Okay, Mr. Garner, would you call the roll? Noble? Yes. Selby? Yes. Autry? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Quinlan? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cook? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Melvin? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, next item on old business is administrative item 16-5393. Uh, this is for UDC Chapter 151.01 amendments submitted by Alderman Petty and the city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, when we presented this last time, there seemed to be uh, somewhat of a consensus among the commissioners that we uh, broaden this uh, proposal beyond uh, merely allowing ease to encroach into setbacks, but architectural projections in general, such as eaves, utility chases, chimneys, bay windows. Uh, drafted that language with the city attorney. I believe it's in your packet for. Uh, your approval or amendment, and I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Williams, you want to add any comment? No. Uh, no, this actually uh, came uh, primarily from Alderman Petty. I, I drafted it up for him. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, let's see. I guess is there any comment from the public on this item? Okay, seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. Any comments, questions, motions from the planning commission? Mr. Hoskins. Um, the added language says roof over Hames Timmy's utility chases bay windows should be allowed to intrude slightly into a setback area, but never across the property line. The word slightly seems to be really, really open for interpretation. Uh, where are you reading? Uh, I have different language here. He's just he's reading the whereas clause. You need to read down to the actual code, which is under Section 1, which states an architectural projection such as eave, utility chase, chimney, or bay window shall not be considered to be in violation of a setback requirement as long as the projection does not intrude into a public right-of-way or extend more than three feet into a setback. The projection which encroaches into a setback shall not come closer than three feet to a property line. Works for me. Thanks. 
Okay. Thank it. you. Mr. Chair? Ms. Bellin? Um, there's an item tonight that talks about part of an ordinance that, that um, says that eaves can't be more than, we can't be less than 10 feet apart. I would assume that anywhere such stated such as that, that takes precedence over this. I'll have to ask that. Or, Mr. Brady, you might comment on that if you want. But uh, I, I think the ordinance you're referring to is the cottage housing development uh, section of the code, and yes, that does take precedence over this. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? Kyle? I mean, I think... Ms. Thompson, yes. Thank you. Um, perhaps what, uh, also what Ms. Uh, Belden is uh, referring to could be uh, not planning code, but building code, uh, in which uh, any anything that would be uh, flammable would have to be five feet apart, so typically, or ten feet apart, so typically buildings, eaves, any construction or structure that could catch fire would have to be that far apart, so that will affect these structures as well. Okay. Let me clarify thank that. Okay, thank you. Any more questions, comments, motions? Mr. Chair. Mr. Hoffman. I want to make a motion that we, are, we approve ADM 16-5393. Uh, uh, it's just a recommendation. And it's actually a forward. Yeah. I'll make a motion that we forward ADM 16-5393 to the City Council with a recommendation of approval. Is that with or without the new language? Uh, with the new language. Seconded. Okay. We have a motion from Mr. Hoffman and a second from Ms. Quinlan. Any other comments? Okay, Mr. Garner, we call the roll. Noble? Yes. Selby? Yes. Autry? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Was that no? I'm sorry. Yes. I was wrong. <laughs> keep forgetting. Yes. <laughs> Quinlan? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cook? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Belden? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Petty. Okay, first item on new business. Uh, it's variant 16-5422 for the southwest corner of Joyce and Steel Boulevard. This is Uptown Apartments, submitted by Specialized Real Estate Group. And our urban forester, Mr. Scott, has this one. Good afternoon. <laughs> Um, basically, the applicants are wanting the variance. Um, they would like to allow a patio in the adjacent green space, which we had for a 15th. When they originally applied for this project, they did have the uh, patio, and they showed it stopping at the 15-foot green space. But since their application originally went through, we've changed some language and some other codes, and we allow more pedestrian-friendly elements to be in this 15-foot green space. And we would normally approve this one administratively, but. The language in the other one says uh, urban zoning district, and this is a C3, so it doesn't quite fit. Um, the buffer is intended to screen the parking, and in this case, the applicant is creating uh, a frontage that is pedestrian friendly while maintaining street trees, sidewalks, and a four foot small uh, landscape buffer. We recommend approval. Okay, thank you. Is the applicant present for this item? <laughs> If you would step forward and state your name for the record and add anything else you want. Uh, this is Michael Pope from Modus Studio. I'm just here to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Is there anybody from the public that wants to comment on this item? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioners? Discussion? Mr. Chair. Mr. Hoffman. Uh, excited about this project. I'm happy to see um, somebody, even, even though this is zoned, as the urban forester pointed out, even though this, this is zoned C3, uh, the applicant has chosen a, uh, an urban building form here, which I think is entirely appropriate, um, and I'm going to be supporting this. Good. Thank you. Any other commissioners have comments or motions? Chair. Mr. Autry. I would like to make a motion that uh, variant 16-5422, southwest corner of Joyce and Steel Boulevard, uh, be approved per recommendation of the staff. Second. 
And of course, there is one condition of approval uh, that the encroachment uh, into the landscape buffer will be limited to the area shown in the attached exhibit. <coughs> yes. Second. That condition. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Autry and a second from Mr. Brown. Any more comment? Okay. Noble? Yes. Selby? Yes. Autry? Yes. Hopkins? <coughs> yes. Quinlan? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cook? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Belden? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item on new business is variant 16-5423 for Springfield Drive and Alberta Street. This is the Cove's Phase 2 submitted by Roush Coleman Homes. Uh, looks like Mr. Kurth, you have this one, if you Thanks, would. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the subject property is located on the north side of West Alberta Street between Farmington Municipal Boundary on the west and the Coves Phase 1 subdivision on the east. Uh, when last the applicant came before you, it was for a conditional use permit and a model home within the subdivision. At that time, it was discussed that many of the subdivision's 45 lots are subject to the single-family infill standards, which largely pertain to properties with street frontages under 70 feet, and that the model home did not comply with the ordinance. It became apparent that five building permits were issued counter to the ordinance to begin work on five single-family residences. Uh, the city attorney has since advised that uh, the, the applicant is vested in these properties and work cannot be stopped on them. Uh, it also became apparent that the applicant was not aware of this ordinance and that all 45 lots within the Coast Phase 2 subdivision were laid out with non-compliant floor plans. Following a conversation with the applicant, they expressed interest in pursuing a variance for the remaining 40 properties. Staff feels that this is precisely the kind of development for which the single-family infill standards were developed. And considering the timeline and number of lots remaining unbuilt, we recommend denial for the applicant's request for a variance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Is the applicant here for this item? Yes, sir. If you would step forward, state your name, and anything you'd like to add. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. This is Stephen Lear with Roush Coleman Homes, uh, 4058 North College here in Fayetteville. Um, we started developing this 100 acres back in 2003. Um, we've since built about 250 homes uh, across the board there, and we're on our last 45 uh, lots. And, um, you know, the question's asked, could, could we comply with the ordinance? Absolutely, we could. It's just with, with uh, an expense that we would like to, you know, your consideration um, for us to finish out what we've done. Um, We've got about seven floor plans that we offer with a range from five to seven elevations. Um, the estimate that we've, they've asked us to, um, as far as the estimate associated with doing new architecture, new construction plans, new bidding, the whole nine yards, were eight to $10,000 a plan. Um, we estimate about 90 days to 120 days for that to occur uh, by the time that we get new design, um, new value engineering, go through all of the process that we vet and then to resubmit to our lenders. You know, we're about 120 days out from that. In the meanwhile, you know, we, we lose momentum associated with home sales. We, uh, we have a field manager that builds our homes out there that, that is, is pays associated with production. And then we have a salesperson that is, that is out with, for about 120 days. So we have uh, we've several things associated with this. It's, uh, it's uh, like I say, it's been a great partnership as far as the attainable housing as aspect of what we do here in Fayetteville and what we feel Roush Coleman provides. Um, I think uh, we've got uh, a great project. That's all we can all be proud for of the 250 that are there. It's all something we can drive through as we've partnered with the city in the past with the five acre park. And I think it's been a, it's a, been a great project altogether, but we would like your consideration and approval to allow us to, to complete out the 45 lots under those standards uh, with your permission. Been happy, ha be happy to answer any questions uh, if you have any. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody from the public that would like to comment on this item? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission. Commissioners, any questions or comments? Mr. Chair. Mr. Hoffman. I have a question for Mr. Lear. If you would come back up, please. Yep, thank you. Sure. Uh, does Roush Coleman intend to continue to work in the city of Fayetteville? Yes, sir. You intend to comply with the, with the ordinance? Yes, sir. Thank you. That's, uh, well, that's good news, obviously. Um, 
It's also good news that uh, Mr. Lear, uh, in his own words, said that, that they would be able to comply with, with the ordinance on these lots. Um, we passed this ordinance for, for very good reason that we spoke about, I think it was a couple meetings ago. I uh, saw a very similar item on the agenda at that time. Uh, major difference being that, that that neighborhood was mostly built out, whereas there's currently either either no, are, are there any structures currently, Andrew? I think there's five structures that have been permitted, but there, nothing has nothing been, been constructed. Yeah. And, and we're, those, those five structures aren't up for discussion, right? Those, those are. That's correct. Okay. So. Yeah, so we're, we're looking at a, uh, a new subdivision that um, hasn't, hasn't been built, hasn't, you know, hasn't had permit, uh, permits pulled on it. Uh, I think it's entirely appropriate that they comply with the ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alcorn. Sure, come on back. This subdivision is, uh, like I say, this is this is a hundred acre parcel that we've owned, and we've developed it in phases. So, uh, I'd like to clarify that this is this is a project that's been forth, you know, been ongoing, and and we feel, with all due respect, that we're almost to the end. We've we've got 250 of the 300 there, so we feel as though the majority of it has been built out. This last phase has been a little slow getting there with a little bit of the downturn in the market. Now it's obviously going back in the right direction, so I'd like to offer that clarity if I could. Please. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair? Ms. Blinlick. May I ask a question of the applicant? Absolutely. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Stand up no, I'll stay up here. Um, speaking of the rest of the project that's been un undergoing and been completed, do any of those lots uh, contain rear facing or side access garage? Uh, I believe there might be one that on a corner that turn. Yes. Right. Yeah. Thank you. We got to get you on record. Hi, I'm Amanda Licata with Roush Coleman Homes. We have one that's permitted and under construction now that's a corner lot. It has a side load garage. Any of the remaining um, portion of the neighborhood that's already been constructed, um, kind of elsewhere in the neighborhood, talking about the larger project, sure. are all of those homes front loaded garages or are there side, side access there's or a mix. rear? There's a mix in that, that first phase. There's a mix of front load, side load, and rear load. Would it be possible to utilize some of those sort of approaches to maintain compliance with the code in, in the new portion? Some of those lots, what we're faced with is we have a green space that's lining up on, not to this left, it, they're shallower lots. So most of our plans that we have that would comply with that that are in our library don't fit within our setbacks anymore just because these lots are shallower with our green space that we have. <coughs> so they don't exactly work. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Any more questions or comments? Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Autry. I do agree with Commissioner uh, Hoffman on going forward for the all the regions that uh, passed this ordinance uh, previous meetings. However, they're at 90, 80, 90 percent through with this particular development and, you know, it looks, I hate to put them in a situation, I mean, they are a substantial, develop, substantial developer within the uh, community of Northwest Arkansas for that matter and, and I hate to see property that's not being able to be developed and not being able to get under contract and not being able to move forward on being sold and get under contract. So that would be the only thing that I'd have a major concern with, although we do have, we have approved this, this ordinance that this is fallen under and for good reason, but I do see a, a hardship in this one case. Now, having said that, I would certainly like to echo the question of, that uh, Commissioner Hoffman asked, and we do have that answer on record that all you know, uh, <coughs> forthcoming development that you do does comply. I know it would cost money to change your plans now. It would, it would delay you rather significantly. So I'm just concerned of a hardship in this particular case, especially since you're at this near completion point of the project. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Want to go? Oh, sorry. Go Mr. Ahead. Hoskins first. Question for staff. The width of these lots, how do they compare to the width of lots in the previous phases of this project? Um, I think they're, well, the applicant can probably answer it more accurately than I can, but I think probably they're wider. I think in some of the, the previous ones, the um, Walnut Crossing and then Coast Phase 1, they did have some even na more narrow lots. I think these are around 60 feet, and some of the other ones were even smaller than that. Okay. Could you pan over to the right just a little bit? Right there. That's good. If you'll notice, there's some houses there that have shared driveways that turn into the, the back of the house. I guess I'm more interested, particularly in those lots, how they are in size compared to these new lots. I'll let the applicant speak to that. Okay. I guess, I guess you're back again. Yeah. <laughs> as far as the uh, the homes in phase one were designed to, to account for the rear access with the rear alley. So we had that, that set of plans uh, in, designed in accordance with that layout. As far as the specific width, I don't have that on hand. I, Those I, aren't the ones I'm asking about. Yes, sir. Okay, I, I can see the, <clears throat> I can see in the aerial there the ones that are rear loaded, obviously. Mm -hmm. If you look to the ones towards the western edge, yes, sir. you'll see some houses with shared driveways that come down between the houses. Um, what are we looking at? Uh, yeah, I asked them to. Okay. Again, if you look at the screen up there, see the houses on the western edge of the previous phase? Mm -hmm. See the two, two houses at the top, as a matter of fact, would be a good example. The shared driveway down, comes down between the two and turns into the houses. Okay. Okay? <clears throat> Those lots there, would you say they're as, as narrow as the ones that, I mean, they, they kind of look as narrow as the ones that you're working on now? Um, quite possibly, yes, sir. I mean, uh, Okay. I think that that design meets the intent of the ordinance. So you actually do have plans that you could utilize on these lots. Uh, so, I mean, or I'm, I guess well, I should ask you that. Don't yeah. you already have plans that you could utilize on these lots? Well, they're, we... They're well, by getting rid of the 120-day period and the, yeah. and the redesign and all that? Well, part of, part of the associated with what we're doing is the side load and that particular plan, we, I mean, I... It might still be exist in our inventory somewhere, and I guess we could look at that, but the side load and the dual and the shared driveway has been more than problematic for, for us moving forward with disputes and, and all of that ab and then above. So as far as that's the reason we haven't looked at going back to any sort of a product like that. I'd also have to double check the depth, uh, like, uh, like was mentioned, I believe those are quite a bit deeper. A lot of our product with that particular was deeper and narrower associated with that to account for that shared driveway. I know our lots in uh, the Coes Phase 2 are, uh, let's see here. Oh, of course it didn't print legibly, did it? Like 100 and, 112 maybe feet deep. So we would uh, you know, we'd have to certainly check the depth to make sure we could try to fit something like that. Um, in all honesty, like I say, the reason I would be a, not like to go with that again is because of the all of the conflict that we've had amongst homeowners, and uh, it's been a real challenge from that standpoint, which is a, I understand is a separate issue, but um, we could certainly the check the depth. You've mentioned that a couple of times. What's been the opposition? Just as far as somebody parking in the driveway, you know, you know, Cox pulls in and pulls on and works on somebody's house, and they say they can't get out, and then they get into bruckus, and then we get a phone call about it, and it's just, you know, it's just one of those things that we see as very problematic from our standpoint, unfortunately, uh, and why they would never buy another one again. So, and I certainly understand that's a different issue. I would have to, to tell you 100% without a doubt if that would or wouldn't fit, I would have to double check that, and then we would have to understand where the driveway could and could not go between the two lots. You know, is there an easement there? What easements have to be vacated associated with it? Um, you know, we could see where it could fit, um, but it, it would once again be counter to our to our current plan. But it would be closer than where we're at today, 
but it wouldn't be our first choice in all honesty for those reasons. Just because it creates, once again, it creates the work associated with checking the easements and you know, staff can correct me if I'm wrong as far as what the provisions would be for us to then allow for a shared driveway on a property line. Um, and then where that is and is not allowed, should there be a utility or a drainage easement within there? You know, we've got all of our swales cut and, you know, within the two pads, so we'd not like to compromise the grading that's already complete as well. Um, so, you know, the bottom line is, is you know, we've, we've planned for these plans in this subdivision, um, and, and while I understand that, you know, we, we were completing construction right around and final plan in February, and it was, the ordinance was passed in October, but obviously the planning for us started pretty much in January of 14 for us to have a plan lineup that would fit and work. And then we've got marketing material. Once again, that's another uh, uh, item that we would have to address um, as far as updating things. And most, or more than all, it's the time. It's like you say, it's just, that's, that's, where the, that's where we're gonna experience probably the most uh, hardship as far as trying to do that, uh, as far as revamping our process and where we're at today. Should we have to pull plans from archives, which honestly we'd prefer not to do, uh, uh, and to see where they could and could not fit on a portion of the lots. Um, you know, that, that's, once again, that would take us some time to pay an engineer to evaluate, uh, uh, if that answers your question. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it did. Okay. Um, have you all considered, I mean, center, the center group of lots and maybe run the rear alley down the middle of that? Um, I have not considered that. Moving the screen back over to the right again, please. Oh, other way. Um, go right. Go right. Push well, the well, screen. Well, right. There we go. There, the, there you go. Almost a little more. Yeah. Okay. And that, in the center section of the of the neighborhood there, mm -hmm. it looks to me like you could possibly incorporate a a shared drive there. No? Uh, you'd have to double check the utilities if there's electric already installed in the rear. Um, it would require removal of electric and additional expense associated with that. Yeah, has, has, somebody, has somebody told you that you can't build a driveway over an easement or something? Um, I don't, I mean, in between, on a lot line, I don't know. I mean, I'd, I'd have to defer to the staff and ask for that specific. Mr. Chair, do you want me to address that? Please, if you would. Uh, yeah, a driveway, shared driveway, a parking lot can be over a utility easement. The only easement it probably could not be over would be a drainage easement. Right. So yeah, that's, it's, that's it's very common to have that along the side property line. Right. That's that's my understanding as well. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, <clears throat> okay. I think that's pretty much all I had. Uh, you know, uh, I feel for you. <laughs> the um, none, none of this is ever fun, of course, and it's never cheap. Um, but. Again, we, as you, Commissioner Hoffman said last, I think last meeting or whatever, we had a, a similar thing come through, but that was a very small parcel of land in the middle of neighborhoods that are already, already fully built out and out on the edge of town, and and um, um, I didn't see that as, as a practical thing at all, um, as small scale as what it was, but here we're talking about 45 lots. And, and while I understand it's a portion of a much bigger project, visually you look at this neighborhood and this portion is a neighborhood on its own. It's got a neighborhood kind of within a neighborhood kind of thing or what have you. Um, you know, I would hate to vote against you on it because I know the position that you're in. Um, but by the same token, it also appears that that there could be a compromise, a, a, a combination with some rear drives or what have you. I understand that that comes with an expense as well, but I don't think it would be near the expense as what you had mentioned earlier. Um, as it sits right now, I would find it very, very difficult to support your variance, um, at least at this point when it doesn't appear that you've tried to make any adjustments, if that makes sense. Um, 
you know, maybe one of the things you might want to consider, I mean, I don't know how the rest of this panel feels, but one of the things you might want to consider is, is maybe table the item, take a look at it and, and say, well, maybe we can't do the entire thing the way that the ordinance says or whatever, but, but we can make it much better than what it is by incorporating some rear hours and that kind of thing. Because it looks to me like you've got plenty of room to do that. So. Uh, cer certainly, I agree with that. There's there's opportunity to change it. It goes back to our time constraint. You know, all, you know, every day that we wait is a day that we can't pull a permit and start building a home. So, um, you know, we just uh, that's that's ultimately why we're here. It's just to be able to move forward with the game plan that we had all intended on moving on forward with, just from a business standpoint. Um, and that's that's ultimately where we're at. There, I, I agree with you. Things things can be changed. Uh, However, what we would like to do is move forward so we can, can you know, not be, not have that in, in our, from our perspective, you know, an $80,000 expense with new plans and then the lost time associated with that, the slowing the momentum, no sales for this person. Those, those are the components that we are really concerned with. I agree that it, it could all be fixed. And, and once again, we, we plan to do this. Uh, from I say starting in January 14 going through, and um, you know just it's, like say it's unfortunate. Um, so are you saying that you'd rather have an up or down vote tonight and not not a tabling? Is that what you're saying? Um, as far as is there any other are there any other ideas that that could be set forth potentially by the commission to help us? move in the direction like you suggest as far as I'm an sure this group up here can give you a lot of ideas. <laughs> I'm positive of that. All right. Okay. Okay. Mr. I'm that's all I had or whatever. He's on his own now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Spellman. I have a couple of questions of the applicant. Yes, ma'am. Uh one is is that the the curb cuts along West Alberta Street that are shown. They appear to be right, right in line with the boundary between the lots. They appear to be cut for side access to garages. They're shared driveways, meaning the, the, the plans that we had intended when the, the city had asked us to put those drive, shared driveways in, that you know, we essentially were going to have a left-hand and a right-hand <coughs> home, and then the, they would have a shared driveway, then the driveway would split. So those are side-loaded garages no, for those? No, ma'am. They're just shared driveways, and then they're going to... Correct. Okay. Yeah, they're just, they're, just a, they're, just a shared, they're just a shared point at which the vehicle would access the driveway from the street. I was that hoping was a the city other. requirement. Yeah. Oh, believe... I mean, <laughs> we have no desire to buck the system. I mean, we've, we've tried, and we've been in compliance with all the changes through building codes and, and done that. It's just reached a point now where we've... Are bearing a time constraint and an expense that we feel is um, is worthy of discussion and and where we come from as as a, as a business here in Fayetteville and wanting just to quite simply finish out what our plan was to move on to the next one, which once again would be in compliance because it could be then therefore planned for appropriately. Um, my, my other question is probably more of a comment. One of the seven plans has the garage four foot eleven inches back from the furthest extension of that, mm -hmm. that front facade. That's correct. Are these in equal numbers? Does that, is that one-seventh of the plans? That's one, correct. That's one. And one-seventh, not just of the plans, but of what will be built? Um, we would, it's tough to say. I would expect just on average about, about that, that, that one of those plans will be built, you know, equally as much, just assuming not, not really knowing where the market's going to go. And what people may or may not particularly fancy, if you will. Okay, thank uh, you. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Autry. Um, seemingly, since Mr. Commissioner Hoskins' line of questioning, I think has got me swinging back and forth here on the vine. Uh, it may be that you do have additional plans. It sounds like you do. You have them in that area where uh, Commissioner Hoskins uh, <clears throat> talked about. And I'll just make a comment on the uh, tabling of this particular motion. 
I know you're looking at a lot of lost days, but if we could table it for two weeks and you could go back and do some research of how you might could redesign this, because it seems like you would to be a two-week investment versus the possibility of us taking a vote tonight and just really okay. hammering you bad. Okay. Because I'm swinging kind of back to the other way, although I do see the hardship. It does seem like your firm is, you've got uh, facilities all over northwest Arkansas that that might be a good investment of two weeks of your time. Okay. So Thank I you. see it blown up. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, that, that'd be fine. I mean, if, I certainly appreciate the advice. Yes, sir. We can certainly do that. Okay. Mr. Chair. Ms. Quinlan. I'll be brief since we've had a lot of conversation oh, you're fine. on this. But I, I, I agree both with uh, Commissioner Autry that I have a lot of sympathy that I know it's, it's not Nobody wants to be in this position. None of, none of us are happy about this. You guys aren't happy about this. But I do agree, too, with Mr. Hoskins that um, I think you have shown the variety and flexibility that you guys are, have the potential to provide in homes, driveway access, et cetera, directly adjacent to this. And we've, we've seen that you guys are very capable of providing a, a wide range of garage you know, solutions um, that I, I don't know that this is a site that size-wise, slip-wise, et cetera, um, it's impossible to meet the intent of the code, and I think the intent of the code is good. Um, so I, I think I agree with the advice that's been given that tabling and seeing how many of the lots could be brought into compliance easily with existing plans um, and only discussing those that would be a true hardship might be the best approach. I, I at this point, would not be able to support um, just based on the information we've seen today. So just as far as my understanding, if uh, uh, I don't think the lots are wide enough for us to do a side entry. I don't think they're for us to be able to do a side load entry. Um, the rear access, I know we don't have enough room to build an alley around the perimeter with the tree protection ordinance and likely the, the alleyway in the back of the island due to the electric being in aside from the cost. Um, you know, I think where we're at is, is redesigning our floor plan still. I don't, you know, or, or trying to find, a, you know, an old plan somewhere that we've built. Uh, those over there, you know, that, that'd be the other option. But, um, you know, I certainly, certainly respect that, and, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be able to try to find a solution that uh, works for everyone. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hoffman. Yeah. I'd just in terms of solutions, I want to. I agree with uh, Commissioner Hoskins. I think you can run an alley down the center of that block. That'll really work. Uh, the, the other thing that I would look at is I'm just checking out these uh, these shared access, how these the side loaded shared drive houses that you've got, and the other ones that are paired, a left hand and right hand. Um, I would look at uh, building all either left hands or right hands. Uh, and if you do that, what you can have is a situation where you don't have a shared drive, but the drive can still be built over the property line. Okay, so it's there's there's an access easement there, but it gets rid of that issue of the utility people parking in the. Does that, does that make sense? Mm. So you say you're saying you have the drive wider to allow dual access? I'm no, sorry. I'm saying you build. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at the 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 houses that Mr. Hoskins, Commissioner Hoskins, just pointed you to. Those right there, where the mouse is, right there. Oh, yep. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Those guys. So that's a left-hand house and a right-hand house, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. I'm saying if you built all, if you built only left-hand houses, uh, you could run a driveway up the left side of each of those houses yeah. that's split across the property line. Okay. Right. Are you following me, uh, Mr. Do Garth? we do we have any well, impervious here, areas to, um, associated with that? Um, we, yeah, I mean, they, we, he, I was, as he discussed, they'd have to look at the drainage easement locations and things yeah, like that. Yeah. But, I, but what I'm getting to is, I, you know, that's, that, those are just a couple of solutions that I see right here in front of me that, that seem plausible. And if, if, I, if just in a couple of minutes of looking at this, yeah. uh, I can see already a few, you know, plausible yeah. solutions, then there's no way I can support a variance. Thank you. Okay, so it looks like the majority of the commission wants to table your project that's fine. for two weeks. Thank you. To give you the opportunity to... Look at it a little closer. Are you agreeable? That'd be with that? great. Okay. Thank you. Commissioners, is there a motion as such, or do you? Mr. Chair. Mr. Hoskins. Okay. Understood. 
Uh, <laughs> if I can make a motion to table variance 16 5423 for until the next scheduled meeting of Planning Commission. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Hoskins and a second from Commissioner Autry. Is there any more comment? Okay. Ms. Garner, if you would call roll. Noble? Yes. Selby? Yes. Autry? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Quinlan? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cook? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Belden? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. We'll see you in two weeks. Next item on new business is variance 16-5427 for 521 North College. This is the Twin Arches Apartments submitted by Jorgensen and Associates. Uh, looks like we have Mr. Thompson this evening. Yes, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. The um, <clears throat> property is located at 521. North College, if you would zoom in just a little bit, please. It's um, the old Twin Arches Motel, which I think many of us are familiar with. It's now a uh, derelict uh, 1950s motor lodge with um, apartments and, uh, and attached garages. Uh, this project is, uh, the, the variance before us has to do with a, an SIP that's been brought forward that will involve the demolition of this uh, derelict building and the um, redevelopment with, the, with about 14 apartment units on the site. <coughs> the request is in order to proceed with that uh, small site improvement plan, uh, there are three variances that would uh, need to be uh, granted according to the applicant. Uh, the first is uh, a variance of the parking lot design standards, we allow approximately, well, exactly 35% and no more of those provided parking places to be compact parking places. A standard parking place is 9 by 19. A compact parking place can be reduced to as much as 15 by 7.5. The applicant is providing 19 parking places here. They would like to request that an additional two of those be compact spaces. Uh, that would be a total of approximately 42% compact spaces instead of seven. <clears throat> Staff is recommending approval of that um, in, in that um, we believe they'll have ample parking for these 14 dwellings. The additional compact spaces, in our, in our opinion, won't be necessary um, uh, all the time. And they will increase uh, their ability to save some particular trees that are along the west side of the property and it better works with their, uh, with their topography. It begins to get very steep right toward the back. So we do recommend in favor of, of variance number one. As far as variance number two, uh, chapter 166.23 requires, that's our urban uh, residential design standards, those require that uh, everyone that has a unit facing the street, a public street, has a door. That unit should always have a door that uh, faces that side and comes out. We try to uh, use that as a tool for creating a uh, positive, active, and inviting uh, urban landscape and streetscape. I think this is a, a central, a central uh, element that we are able to, uh, to encourage people to activate their street with is this, uh, is this uh, street door. And so <clears throat> we don't see a particular reason in this case, if you would show us a, an elevation. We don't see a reason why that uh, is unfeasible or can't be done in this case. and, and uh, very strongly recommend that that be included in the project in order to build that in order to build that streetscape here on, on North College. Variance number three uh, is a variance for our architectural design standards. Uh, again, uh, in this case, um, the building must have a, a variation of materials, uh, a certain amount of insets, so we don't create a, a long, um, very uh, straight wall without a lot of articulation. Um, <clears throat> we look for balconies, bays, porches, windows, dormers, et cetera, in order to achieve that. Uh, it was our opinion that those were not being met by the elevation. And if you would uh, actually open that elevation on the, on the desktop that was provided today. This came from the applicant today, and it's a little bit better, I think, uh, interpretation 
of <coughs> what they plan to do there. Uh, I've looked at it briefly. I haven't looked at it uh, point by point, but I do think that it, uh, although it's unorthodox uh, in a certain sense, uh, may certainly meet some of those, at least enough of those uh, elements to potentially uh, not uh, need variance three. I would like for you to go ahead and look at that, though. In particular, the applicant pointed out today, and um, you know, I don't know that we can see it very clearly here, but uh, perhaps in, in shadow you may see it the very best. But underneath uh, that black vertical element there that projects from the wall, that's actually an address sign, so it says 521. If you um, right below that, right there, there's actually a, and there may be another. If you go down, go down uh, to the next page. I think it shows it a bit more clearly if we have that one, and we may not, and that's fine. Uh, that appears to be a steel piece that comes down, wraps that sign. There's a bay window in there, just looking north and south. Uh, very unusual. Doesn't look like a bay window to me when I'm looking at something flat, but I think it potentially meets that uh, that requirement. Up to you again, and um, you know they do have a, a deeper inset there, and I think it, it reflects better in this elevation than it did when you're looking at a different uh, in a different elevation. So I'm going to leave that up to your determination. So we were uh, recommending against uh, number one, or excuse me, for number one for the compact spaces against the ground floor entry variance, and we were recommending uh, against number three for for those architectural elements, uh, a variance of those. Um, and I think if you have any questions about it, I'd be glad to glad to do it. I do have uh, conditions of approval we could discuss if you feel like approving some of those. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Is the applicant here? If you would step forward, state your name, and add any more comments you would like. My name is Evan Niehaus um, with Jorgensen Associates, representing the owner here. And so I guess you guys can see that um, we're trying to do something relatively unorthodox and, and kind of interesting. Um, you know, keep Fayetteville funky, right? But um, anyway, it's it's going to be a nice building. It's going to be well done. There's going to be well articulation on the front. You're going to be able to see through those panels into the courtyard. It's going to be a wide sweeping staircase that comes down and, you know, very grand entrance up to the front. Nice lettering. The, the staircase will go, go the whole way and will attach to the future plans. We've talked to the engineering department and how, how wide it is, where it's going to connect, the elevations. So we have steps that can be within the easement, within the access, 30 inches or less, that, that go down and will connect to the sidewalk. Yes, it will be usable. Um, do you mind continuing? So this is what it looks like now. I think everybody's well aware. We want to move on from that. And we want to build something nice that, that Fayetteville can, can appreciate. Um, so here, if we touch on the first variance, just so everybody, I guess, is well aware of what's going on. This is the, um, on the south side, those are the parking spaces we're looking to get a compact space on. So those will be standard nine feet wide. They will be 15 feet in depth, though. Um, oftentimes, another two feet is just granted in general because, um, you, you can overhang a parking space by a couple feet by just pulling your car up to the wheel stops. So really we're asking for a relatively small variance to preserve some trees and stay a little bit away from the, um, the property line there. We've already taken out um, something like three spaces to save some of the trees. So that's, that's that variance. We can continue on. Um, infill, number one goal, Fayetteville. This is a prime example of infill. So this is something that is from the actual presentation made to the Planning Commission to when it was coming through as the Urban Residential Design Standards. This is, um, I think, the standard of what they were trying to get across is that, you know, most homes face the front, most have apartments, most have, you know, typical entries, typical straightforward entries, typical places, and we're not trying to do that. It's a nice facade. It's a, it's a well-done facade. It will look good. Um, but this isn't what we're trying to do. Um, that's just another example of like, hey, this is not what we want, this is what we want, but you know, we're not really doing that, and I think you're well aware of that. Um, this is the intent of the ordinance. Enhance variables, identity, natural viability. 
I think this project does that. It's a very nice project. It'll look good. It'll face the street. It creates a appealing street scheme. We're going to have a wide sweeping entry into it. Um, parking is to the side, not in front. It's going to be completely detached. Attractive residential facade. I guess, you know, everybody's opinion of attractive is hit and miss, but I think it looks good. And the pedestrian circulation, this is the connection. You know, um, the actual ordinance reads, you can have one entry per two units. This is a very wide entry. It's, it's I don't know, maybe 20 feet wide. And the access, when you get to it, actually from the unit itself is between 10 and 8 feet. So by code, I mean, if you look at it in a very liberal terms, you may not even need a variance if you, if you look at it in a certain way. Um, there is one entry, there will be one gated entry that will be open and closed easily, it will be see-through, um, so you will be able to see into the courtyard. It's not going to be ugly, it's not going to be a roll-up gate, as it does mention in the SAP report. That's not our intention. Um, but anyway, if you want to continue, saw it again. And I think Yumi had some, some things she wanted to mention, particularly about the architecture. If you, would if you would state your name. Good please. evening. Um, my name is Yumi Rosinski. I'm the architect on this project. I'm with Architects uh, 226. Um, I wanted to address you all in regards to the um, trying to get a variance for having just one entry. As we know, that College Avenue has changed over time. It's not a pedestrian street anymore. Uh, so my goal as the architect is to follow the code, but the code, as you all know, it, it's, all, it's written to the minimum standard, right? It's for us to, to look at and say, this is the minimum that the city is asking us to, along with codes like for fire codes. These codes are written because some, somewhere along the way, something happened, so these codes came about to make things better. So, um, you know, I'm looking, so I'm looking at the code and trying to address the front entry. Um, you know, we were... I was talking to Quinn Thompson about this, and he said, it's my, it's, it's, of course they're denying a hardship on the two entries. It's not hard putting the, yeah, I, I totally understand why that's, that's been denied. It's not hard putting two entries in the front. If you look at the existing building, for me as a designer to go in and put two small doors on a project of this scale, in terms of the scale of College Avenue, College Avenue has changed over time. So I think it's our, my obligation, our obligation, to put a building there that respects the scale of College Ave. So it's not a residential street. It's, it's becoming more urban. So when I'm putting up a building there, it's, it will be really easy for me to look at that and say, okay, two entries, two units, let's put it there. But that's being myopic, right? So I'm really just thinking about you know, the, the users of those two units, and that's it. I'm not thinking about you or I driving down that street, my kids living in Fayetteville, and having buildings that are putting up, put up that's not respecting the scale of the street. So, so our intention was to design an elevation that would be more grand, um, to put a, a porch that can receive more than just the two person that the units are on the front, but to, to provide a big courtyard so everyone can enjoy. But, uh, and also, you know, this grand stair, uh, in terms of its material, we wanted to utilize some of the um, existing veneer that's there. Um, so, I mean, we're going to demolish all that stuff, but the veneer there, if you look at it, I mean, it's beautiful stone. That stone can be reused. So, you know, we thought about, why don't we just take that and just, and just uh, wrap the, the new stair. The height of where that plinth is, that's the existing entry area that's there. The Google Earth image that shows us the, the existing condition, it's really it's deceiving. I mean, that thing climbs up about eight feet. So we wanted to provide a grand stair, again, to a scale of the street, um, so that the, the, the people driving by, the people who are living there, can actually use it, not just the two people that are in the front, but everyone else that's there. Because college, I mean, there's, you know, you have the motorcycle uh, events. You have, you know, stuff that happens on College Ave. It would be nice for people to, to be able to hang out there and, and sit. And IGA, or the, um, the new grocery store, I mean, that's just down the street, right? So you want people to be able to use that as a, a, a main way of coming in and out. 
I mean, we provided a pedestrian connection from the parking lot, but I think it's also my, my job is to provide them with an access where they want to walk, right? So that it, it feels better to, you know, walk downtown, walk to the store instead of saying, you know what, I don't want to go out to College Ave because there's really not a pedestrian free entry. So that's why we've done that. Um, so the materials, yeah, we do have uh, variations of materials. The inside of where the entry is, we want to make a really nice wrought iron uh, pivot gate, but on the inside we want to line it up with the, with the wood that Mark Y normally uses. He loves that soft wood look. Um, and then again, with the, we wanted to put uh, a super graphics in there just to respond to the, the scale of where this building is. Um, any other any questions? We'll call you back. We have some more questions. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone from the public that wants to comment on this item? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commissioners. Mr. Chair, Mr. Hoffman. Yeah, I have a some thoughts about this project. I think it's a. First of all, I just want to congratulate you on the project. I think it, it's uh, really interesting. I, the, the, the idea of courtyard housing in this location is uh, particularly exciting. I think typologically it's, it's infinitely appropriate. Um, I've thought a lot about this project. Uh, the, the parking, by the way, I have no problem with that. I uh, won't even discuss that. I've thought a lot about this project. The, it's, it sits basically between a half block and a block away from two of the most desirable neighborhoods in Fayetteville. Uh, it's on a street that is about to see millions of dollars in, in public investment uh, to, to try to make it a more pedestrian friendly area. So, uh, you know, given that, <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned about just sort of dismissing College Avenue as, as sort of an, an auto oriented street or, or saying that it's, it's not appropriate to respond to a pedestrian scale, um, you know, and then just looking at, at the elevation, there, there's sort of a, I, I, don't, I don't mean to sound pejorative, but, there, but there's, there's sort of a pessimism about, about the street that's embodied by that kind of screening off. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it feels almost like a little bit like sort of Detroit after dark or something. Uh, and th there's an edge to that that's, that, is, that is interesting, and I, and I, can, I can see why you're, you're sort of fascinated by this austere facade and this, the, the grand scale of this, of this entry, but then I don't understand why we put that screen there. Um, I, maybe I would be more comfortable. We, maybe we should probably talk about the screen. Maybe I would be more comfortable if, if the screen were, you know, just sort of something that was up between the hours of, you know, 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. or something like that. I can, I can almost see a, a, you making a case for that, but... Um, you go to so much trouble to create this this grand entry, these these beautiful stairs. Uh, we have very few entries in, in the city of Fayetteville that, that do what you're doing, and, and and I think it's interesting, and I, and I, it's so to me it's sort of disappointing to to then see this this screen behind it because it, it's um, again it's to, to me it it seems a little bit pessimistic, unnecessarily so given the vibrancy of the area and, and what's about to happen here. I think you guys are going to do something amazing here, uh, but, but you're just going to be the first of many. There's going to be a lot of great things that happen on this section of college. Um, I think I'll keep it at that for now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Hoskins. Thank you very much. Um, I guess I'm a little bit confused by the elevations. What I see on the screen right now is something that looks like a horizontal metal facade, but I look in my packet and there's a another sketch that says Cedar Shake. Um, um, maybe the architect could step up and kind of unconfuse me about that. Yep, if you would please, thank you. That was submitted a couple weeks ago and last week we sent in Another rendering. I guess I just not got it. Didn't get in there. So there was there was one last week that was updated, and then there was one today. So, sorry. Okay, so is it your intent that the entire this entire building is going to be a metal facade? 
No, it is actually out of Hardy. We wanted to do Cedar Shakes, but because it's in the fire district, we have to only use um, non-combustible material. And so with the Hardy, I'm, I'm able to um, achieve that, on, on, you know, the, the non-combustible material assembly. You know, Hardy makes a shake, right? Yes, but it's a, uh, but Mark wants to use the real thing. So we thought, you know, why don't we. I'll bet you that. <laughs> okay. Um, on the variance on the, on the uh, parking, I don't have a problem with that. On the variance on the, um, I guess, the uh, entrances, you know, honestly, I don't really have a problem with that either. The only thing that I kind of have a problem with is that it, it kind of looks like these are stairs to nowhere. In other words, you get to the top of the stairs and you're not going through that fence regardless. Is that the case? No, the the gate is is open. I mean, it's just I mean, it's a pivotal gate. It's just not locked. We can't lock it. Okay, so and that's it's something you know it's shown on this plan. Not shown on the elevations. There's, I think, in the plan, it's just shown as a just demarcated a line there. But you know, in terms of you know, when I when I first looked at this thing, Mark wanted a um, his idea was to put a a swimming pool inside. And I just, I told Mark, uh, the owner, I said, you know, I want to be, I mean, the pool is hard in that area. And I love these little urban infill area, but to be able to create a space where a lot of people can use it to put barbecue grills out there and just have, a, you know, just to have that little community come out and, and hang out. And I thought, well, maybe in order to provide something like that, we give them a, you know, a, a little more privacy. Say, okay, there is a screen there. But the, how, it's does a that, how does that people, relate to the gate, ma'am? I'm sorry, relate? the gate? How does that relate to the entrance of this thing? The pool In terms of how it's, it's open, anybody can come through it. It's just, it's a, can you flip to the screen that it shows a pivot, the black pivot painted gate? There should be an image on there. Go down, there it is. We wanted to do something like that where they could have easy access to it, but also, um, again, gives, gives them that more privacy behind there. Okay, so. And not be a wall. The, ele the, ele the elevations you're trying to get approved tonight, is this indicative of the elevations? This is how you're going to build it? Yes. If we're going to do a gate, we would do a gate like that. Or come in with. with some sort of a plant or some sort of trees, just to give them a little bit of, of, of privacy. Okay. Okay, it sounds to me like there's some of the stuff that's kind of still up in the air then. Is that a safe assumption? I'm sorry? It sounds to me like some of this is still up in the air then. Is that a safe assumption? Uh, not with the gate. I mean, we would like to have a gate there, but if you all don't think it's a, a good idea, and, and, and I, I understand what you're saying. Um, you know, if, if we, I don't think it's going to hurt the project if we get rid of the gate and put up something that's, that provides a little bit more privacy, you know, or, you know, it's not that same type of privacy, maybe a bamboo grove or something in the front that can do the same thing. So. I think our most important thing that we're trying to get across here is that we have one entry across the front, not two accesses out of two units coming yes. off the front. And and these these were these are is an existing foundations we're trying to reuse. So we're building it all in the same spot, same foundation. And another reason for having no separate entries is that we're coming off the parking lot with handicap access and getting to the units. And to try and get handicap access around to the front can't. is is just going to be impossible. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm I'm, I'm, I'm obviously doing a terrible job asking my question. I'm just doing a terrible, terrible job. Okay, let me rewind. Back to the elevation. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it appears from the elevation that you have steps to nowhere. It okay. goes to the front okay. sidewalk. Allow me to finish, please. Yeah, let, let Mr. Hoskins speak. Yep. Thank you. Wow. Keep going. Okay, it appears that these steps go up to this flat area mm -hmm. and to a fence that's there that nobody's going through. In other words, there is no... It doesn't look like there's an entrance at all. That's, that's my point. I understand that, that you're not wanting to put the individual entrances or what have you as required by code. And, and 
generally, I don't have a problem with this type of design because within that code, I've said before, you can't have one size fits all. You don't, I mean, not every building can be the same, okay? And stifles, in my opinion, it stifles good architecture sometimes. What I'm trying to find is the good architecture, okay? Um, it looks like, even though it's a fence, it appears to be uh, basically the, uh, a gated community with no gate. Does that make sense? Okay, and so I'm trying to figure out where the, is there some type of delineated entrance at the front of this building or the appearance of one? That's what I'm getting at. Um, and also, um, the, uh, uh, the articulation on the front of the, on the front of the building, um, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure that a bay window this big does that. So anyway, that's all I had. Thank you. Yeah, sure, Mr. Hoffman. Yeah, I, I I think I know where you're I think I know where you're going with this, and I and I, I agree with you. Um, it's it's a it's a scale issue, so it's not you know it's it's not just about the the sort of materiality of the of this of this fence, which you know at it, it some distances can could either look like you know the the, the gate that 7-Eleven rolls down in front of their store when they're ready to close down, or it could look like this you know kind of beautiful uh, modern gate that, that you're showing here. Uh, so it's it's not necessarily just about the materiality, although that's an, that's one aspect. It's also about the fact that if I'm walking along this street, uh, th there is there is nothing in in a sort of pedestrian scale that would denote entry. Does does that make sense? I I, I think I know what you're talking about, but in terms of once and, and and I apologize for that rendering. I mean that rendering should have you know, when you look at it. One, the scale of the stone. Two, there's going to be handrails and guardrails, and there's going to be other retaining walls that yeah, well are we, going you know, to help. We need to, we need to right, see that. So we can't really have like hypothetical conversations about stuff like that. But you know, it's not, it's not, it's not enough. Like if you if you treat that entire opening in the mm -hmm. same way, yes, you may have a man gate there right. that a person can walk through, and yes, in a very sort of technical sense, that's an entry. But in terms of urban form, it's not anything that anybody can relate to unless they're, you know, driving by in a car. And if you're driving by in a car, then yeah, ooh, entry, I, got, I get it. But it's a, it's, a, it's a different scale of activity that takes place on a sidewalk. And that's really what we're trying to create. I mean, that's what the intent mm -hmm. of this ordinance is, is, is to try to create places and spaces that people can relate to as they're walking along the street. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Let me let me ask a question, Ms. Oh, Bellin, sure. real fast. So if I'm, I just want to make sure I'm, I hadn't heard from everybody yet, but I feel like that most people are okay with the parking portion variants. Uh, <laughs> but I, okay, we'll get to it. I just want to get a feel for everybody else. And then the ground floor entries, the individual entries, is not necessarily an issue, but that mixed with the architectural design standards may be an issue. Is that where we're heading? Okay, Ms. Melvin. Okay. Um, I have a degree in architecture, so I get I get why you're going for a monumental scale. I think it's very brave of the developer to choose to do residential development here because commercial would be so much more financially, you know, advantageous. Um, I, I get it's a commercial street, so this is designed to look like a commercial building, um, and our codes our codes are designed, you know, they're, they're written for it to look like a residential building, only this is blending in with the commercial architecture around it. I, I get that. Um, I, I can understand needing something that's, that says entrance in a, in a way that, um, that the big hole may not. But I think it's a beautifully designed project. I like the courtyard. Um, in other cultures, this is a norm. Um, and, and I think that it, in relationship to Lacuna Modern and to the Starlight development, it fits right in. Um, there, there is nothing else residential on that street except for buildings that used to be residences, but they're now commercial buildings. Um, I do walk this street, um, not often, but I do walk the street through that section. Um, 
and I think that it could be a pleasant experience if, if it's landscaped appropriately. But that's just my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Alter. Uh Parking lots, fine. I think it is with, well, we'll hear from others here in a minute. Uh, it seems, and I love this, I've been waiting for this project to happen for years, and I love the design. Uh, quite honestly, I would not want to see two doors. It would, that would just totally ruin the look, and you're just going, why'd they stick two doors? We understand why, but it, it just doesn't fit the, the, uh, the design and the lines of the building. In fact, it would break them up so much that you, uh, it would be difficult. Uh, the sizes of, well, in that one east elevation, I think I'm looking at two different drawings we're seeing here on this field. Uh, one was a vertical window, if that's what we're going to call it. The other one was horizontal. What are the sizes? Are those the one that's on, well, again, there's another image that's. Yeah, that one's showing the horizontal, that last picture. and. This, this that elevation. one is three feet tall by um, 20 inches wide. 20 inches. And the one underneath the 521 sign? About that the same one time. is, I think that one's three feet tall, and it, it pokes out about two feet. Okay. So it's three width. Yes. Okay. And it and comes off, it, it comes, it's, it's from a kitchen, so the, the countertops, they can, they can uh, look out and, and view North and South College. Great. Okay, and the screen, I'm not, I don't have any heartache over. Uh, the only thing, in fact, I think it's pretty cool detail, actually. Uh, and it, just a simple, stupid question from my simple little mind is, why can't we leave that revolving gate out? Just a question. We can get to it later. I have no problems with the plan whatsoever. I'd love to see you start over tomorrow morning, but uh, I'll let other commissioners go. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Brown. Yes. yes. Uh, if you could just stay there for a second. Thank okay. you. I, I, I do want to congratulate you on it. I think it's a, it's a very attractive design. Uh, there, uh, as far as the parking, uh, I don't have a problem with the fact that you'll have some compact spaces and maybe a few more. Uh, my experience though is I think we might need to make sure there's there's something in there requiring some sort of signage uh, or, or painted uh, compact is that covered in, the, in under the regulations of the city uh, because that can be a real problem where you have uh, people that live there that don't have a compact car and park in a compact space uh, Thank you, Mr. Cook. Um, actually, where you do have compact spaces, that is a requirement, Mr. Brown. Okay. So if you that label that, and typically we do it uh, in paint uh, on or on the pavement. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do notice also that in the in the plan view, uh, you have a an area called demarked as parking. No, no parking. Is that the entrance? There's a break in the wall there where That's patrons correct. can. Go That's correct. to That's the parking it. lot and to their units, yes. okay? Uh, and and uh, architecturally, I, I like the grand stairway. I think that starting to get at bringing the, the, the pedestrian experience, uh, uh, it's adding some interest there. I think where things might be breaking down a little bit is I can sense that you've got a lot of detail in your mind about the, what you want this to look like, but that's not being communicated to us. If there would be an opportunity to better define you know, what that front is going to look like and how that's going to relate to the sidewalk and tie into the sidewalk, in fact, in that view that we're looking at, it doesn't even show a sidewalk. You know, uh, it would be interesting also uh, if you're going to use plant material and landscaping to add um, uh, interest in the pedestrian environment uh, and tying it with College Avenue. I know we were talking about uh, the fact that the city is spending a lot of money 
in improving College Avenue, mm -hmm. to try and improve the pedestrian experience. And I, that's what excites me most about your project, how you're coming down to the street. And I, again, I like this uh, grand stair. But I think where we're breaking down is maybe just seeing your, your vision. You know, it's hard for us to see that. I don't know if, if there's a possibility to table it for a short period of time to, so you have an opportunity to, to, to present your vision. But in general, just so you know where, I, where I'm coming from, I don't have a problem with the, with the parking lot variance. Uh, I don't have a problem with the door uh, way uh, along the uh, variance on the doorway, mm -hmm. I can see where that could just be totally counter to your your image, you know, that you're trying to pre present as an architect. Um, but I also understand the concept of the uh, behind the requirement because we want to make this a pedestrian feel to it. But I think you I think you understand that and can present that that. To us, uh, and I and, and 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 I don't have a problem with the uh, variance of the material either. Um, since everyone though has thrown their two cents in on this, I'm going to take my opportunity to do that. What do you what do you think about pushing that screen back? So from a street view. It's an open, pure, you know, opening, a pure opening, unrestrained, inviting, but then have the screen start at, if you're looking down on your, your uh, interior uh, plan, I don't know if you want, want to bring that up. Uh, uh, the, I can see where you have a walkway going to a, a, a courtyard, a little courtyard area, mm -hmm. maybe put the screen back there. I don't know. You would see it. Yeah, right now it's it would set be back four back feet. In. It would be mm -hmm. back, you know, inside. Right mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be it, it wouldn't be presented as a barrier to entry. It would just be an interesting element, you know, as part of the courtyard. But that's just mm -hmm. two cents. Thank you. Thank you. So let me ask a question since Everyone seems to be good with variance number one. Can we? Do you have any issue if we break this up and at least give them push them forward at least on piece of this? I'm good. Does anybody have an issue with that? No. Yes. Mr. Yes. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Can Ms. I Quinn, add? Uh, I I think in terms of the parking, especially since they're Please nine do. feet wide, I think that's entirely appropriate. Um, they are shown with wheel stops in uh, plan. Would it be appropriate with these shorter spaces for us to allow with those wheel stops from the compact spaces to not be installed? That would allow a wider, it would seem less compact without the wheel stops installed. The code requires some sort of a wheel barrier, whether it's a curb or a wheel stop. So I, I, I don't know if they have curb, they could get rid of the wheel stops, make them a little bit extra space. Um, the other, I mean, if they don't have any curb or wheel stops, they need something so a vehicle won't roll off into the grass. <coughs> okay. Is anybody interested in making a motion on the first variance? Mr. Chair. Ms. Glenlin. I'd like to move that we approve the <laughs> compact spaces of this agenda item. Second. Okay. We have a motion from Ms. Quinlan and a second from Mr. Brown. I believe that's correct. On allowing variance number one for compact spaces. Is there any more comment on that? Okay, Mr. Garner. Double? Yes. Delby? Yes. Autry? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Quinlan? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cook? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Belden? Yes. The motion passes. Okay. Mr. Chair? Mr. Hoffman? Ask something first. Uh, Mr. Mr. Hoffman has the floor right now, so one second. Um, Ms. Uh, um, do you, uh, I was um, I always get a little bit nervous that we, we start like redesigning projects up here, which is not <laughs> yeah. at all what I what I want to do or what I have intention of doing. But at the same time, I'm, I'm always concerned that that we provide sort of a, a credible path forward for somebody. Do you do you feel like you have enough from, from us to, to move forward? I with do, this? and. Um, <coughs> 
I think once we go back and talk with the owner, he's going to want to get rid of the gate because the gate was not his idea. Oh. It was my idea. As, I mean, I, and this sounds terrible, but as a female, I mean, I went to college at Syracuse, and I wanted to be in an, if I was going to run, I wanted to be in a place where I felt, I felt safe. So I told Mark, I said, Mark, I said, if I were a girl, if I were 19, I wanted my own studio, I think I would like it if you put a gate there, because then I would feel a little bit better. You know, for him, it's like, God, how much am I spending? Well, I want to do a really nice gate. Well, I mean, it was, it was a real, I mean, I had to really fight him on this. He didn't want a gate. It's, it's you know, why is he going to put $25,000 on a gate, right? It would be much better. I mean, so for, for me to tell him, hey, there's a gate bomb, he'll be like, great, get rid of it. <laughs> but, so that's why it was, it was more, it was more, you know, thinking about when I was back in college, how I would feel to be in a space like that. So that's where that came from. It wasn't the owner driven, so. Uh, <laughs> thank, thank you for that description. Um, I, you know, I, I think you've got a highly competent building here. I think it's going to be great, and I think you're really close. And uh, what I want to do is, is table the uh, remainder of the variances for a, a couple of weeks and give you another another shot at this. Um, is, would that work for you? The variance would be not omitting the two entries. So we. So so we would table both of those. We would table the. Uh, uh, design standards as, as well as as well as the two entries, and and let you basically sort of repropose. So the design standard, I, I guess I'm confused. We were talking about okay, it's the design standard not meeting, like having the porch as one a design one element and the other one was having a bay window. What, what am I am I missing? You want to clarify, yeah. Mr. Thompson? Uh, well, I think also, if I'm hearing from the commission right, it sounds like. Several of the commissioners are in favor of the building as proposed if the gate is gone. If that's correct, I would recommend you go ahead and move forward and approve it, um, or at least have a motion on the floor. If you feel like there's substantial redesign that you're requiring, then that's when you would want to table the item. I'm just hearing some mixed messages, so I think right. we need to be just clear with the applicant on what you're looking for here. If they've asked a variance for the design standards, and you can grant a variance on the condition that the gate is not there. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I think that there's a couple of different, there's a lot of different ways forward for you as a designer. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be a landscape thing. It could be a, something with a, you know, a different level of art articulation on the gate. I didn't want to sort of box you into right. one thing, but if, if you would prefer that we just move, uh, move forward just without the gate, is that? Yes. That you would I would rather move forward without the gate because okay. I know that's what the owner would say, get rid of the gate. Okay. So. Okay. That sounds fine. I, I would, I'd be fine with that. Somebody well, wants to make me, that motion. Let me jump in there because yeah. Mr. Brown had some comments that were yeah. way more than just the gate. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, 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 let me sure, let me make sure I understand the variances. We have a variance on this, the parking spaces, which I don't have a problem with. Then we have a variance, variance on the, the design standards. There's two of them. One related to door accesses onto College Avenue, and then a variation of material along College Avenue. So but we have, I think we're at, we're at two because our first submission was a flat elevation, and I told Quinn, I said, I understand why you didn't see the recesses. So when I showed him the three-dimensional elevation, he goes, okay, I see it now. You do meet those. So the variances would be the parking, and it would be for having one entry instead of multiple. Those are the two. The, 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 the concern that I have, again, the parking is not a problem. Uh, not having doors on the front is not a problem. The concern I have is that I don't quite, from the, the general design standards point of view, from what I'm looking at here, I can't see how you're your, your your building relates to the public space, to the to the sidewalk, and to College Avenue, and and that's what concerns me. Right now, you're showing us just one element, the grand stairway going up there, uh, but I don't see how that ties into the sidewalk. I don't see how 
uh, it sounds like you're going to have some landscape elements going on there to, to make that a more interesting and attractive space for pedestrians mm -hmm. to, to occupy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't see any of that. And that's so from a design, so from approving a design standard variance, it's difficult for me to know, you know, what's going on. So I, I'm kind of in line that maybe uh, if you had, if, if we can approve the, the parking lot, but the, 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 the other two designs, the design standard variance or approval of that the building, you know, meets our design standards, mm -hmm. let alone the variances, uh, I need more information from the, from the standpoint of the presentation. That, that's what I'm, I'm I should concerned. note that the statute talking about the architectural design standards, section 166.23D, does not mention anything about landscaping or anything like that. It talks about the building. No, no I'm just talking about how with all the, uh, uh, it's located on College Avenue, and the intent of the ordinance, the way it's written, is to improve the pedestrian experience as it relates to the structure. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see how that is going to be handled. I, I can see that they have a, you know, the element of the grand staircase, so to speak, but I don't, it's hard to, to, to make a judgment about the, uh, the design standard and whether they're meeting that. Mr. Chair? That's just my opinion. Are you done, Mr. Brett? Okay. Ms. Belden. It's my understanding we approved variance one. We did. Hmm? Variance two with, had to do with being no pe primary pedestrian entry for the two residential units that are adjacent to the street. That is what variance two says. Variance three is wanting her to go back and put balconies, bays, or bay windows, porches, dormers, porticos, or turrets because it was understood that she didn't have that. Those are the two other variances we haven't dealt with. I don't hear anybody having any troubles with either of those issues. There are other issues people may have troubles with, but not with either of those. So I can't figure out why we don't. You're free we, to make a motion if you feel like it. If you feel comfortable with them, you're free to make a motion. Um, just do one at a time. I move that we approve uh, variance two of of one of 16 dash 5427 it's the 521 North College Twin Arches Apartments. Second. Mr. Chair. Mr. Altman. I, I just want to point out I can't, I can't support either one of these variances uh, with, without some some sort of discussion of, of, of the entry. Uh, we, we've discussed at length the screen. We could eliminate the screen. We could redo the screen. We could. There's there's all sorts of issues that we've that we've gone through that are uh, completely relevant to both of these variances, and I and I cannot support them as, you know, I, I can't support this project as, in its current form. So, I just want to point that out. Mr. Chair, Mr. Ross, I'm agreeing with Commissioner Hoffman. Um, generally, I like the project. Okay, there's just not enough information. There's not enough information for me to make an educated decision. Um, I think the details are very, very sparse, and I think it leaves way too much open to interpretation. Um, I don't know that, okay, well, let's just get rid of the gate. Well, where was it located before? So how does that relate to the rest of the building? I don't know. I don't even know where the gate was. Um, so I don't know that that's a fix. Um, you know, and and... I know Mark. I know Mark does a really good job on a lot of stuff, okay? But as a commissioner or whatever, we're supposed to know these things before we, before we start casting votes. There's not enough information here for me to be able to make a decision. If I can't make a decision educatedly, then I, got, then I have to vote against it. I would highly recommend you table it for two weeks or 
but I mean, you may have enough support otherwise, but <clears throat> I would love to be able to vote for this project. Well, right now we have a motion on the table in a second. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Autry. Unless you're willing to withdraw that, that's what we're going to end up voting on. So, yeah. Okay. I will say I missed my mic. Sorry. A. a motion to table has precedence <laughs> over the main motion, so someone could move to table the motion that's on the floor. Right. Mr. Commissioner. Let me say something. I'll come back to you, Mr. Brown. Just oh. give me just a second. I want to say that I think I agree with what Mr. Hoskins Hoffman are saying is that while in principle we don't have an issue with a lot, not allowing the two entries on the College Avenue, well, I don't think we have an issue with the facade. It's just the entrance off the street and how it addresses the street, I think, is the only issue we're talking about here, if I'm understanding that correctly. Uh, yeah, please. Yes, it's I, these. These two are are related. You know, if 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 we're going to say that we don't need entrances off these these front two buildings, mm -hmm. uh, in in a in a very straightforward sense, and you you have an alternate proposal, I, you know, that's what we're discussing. It's that alternate proposal. We'd we'd like to see changes to that. Okay. I Mr. understand. Mr. Brown, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was just going to bring up a a procedural. Uh, issue, uh, has the applicant said that they're willing to look at a two-week well, tabling? We, we're not even, don't we have to get their approval? No, we're looking to vote on, we're looking to vote on pass these right now, so that's the motion on the floor. Mr. Chair. Mr. Hoffman. I'm going to move that we table. Uh, no, 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 we can't. We've already got a motion on the floor. Yeah. Okay, so the motion to table is always appropriate. It takes precedence over the main motion. Oh, it does. Okay, my bad. I apologize. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move that we table the uh, balance of the variances, variance two and variance three. Okay, we have a motion. Okay, we have a motion from Mr. Hoffman. That would be for two weeks. The table for two weeks. And a second from Mr. Hoskins. Yes, sir. Mike is on this time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what we'll vote on. Mr. Garvin? Noble? Yes. Selby? No. Autry? No. Hoskins? Yes. Quinlan? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cook? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Eldon? Yes. Motion passes. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, next item. I'll get better. Conditional use permit 16 5388. Conditional use for East uh, Washington Avenue between 7th and 11th Street. This is for Willow, <coughs> Willow Bend subdivision submitted by Community by Design. Um, Mr. Garner. The applicants requested this item to be tabled indefinitely, and it is on the agenda, so I think we should open it up for public comment. I won't give a full staff report unless you have questions. Thank you. Okay. I don't think we need a staff report because at this point, but is there anyone here from the public that wants to comment on this item? Okay. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission for a motion to table indefinitely. I'd make one, but I can't. Okay. <laughs> I'll move that we table um, conditional use 16 5388. Indefinitely. Okay. Second. Okay. So we have a motion from Commissioner Selby and a second from Commissioner Hoskins. Any more comment? Okay, Mr. Garner. Neville? Yes. Selby? Yes. Autry? Yes. Hoskins? Yes. Linland? I'm on the Board for Partners for Better Housing and I'm going to abstain from voting on okay. any items related to it. Thank you. Okay. Brown? Yes. Cook? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Eldon? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Uh, last item on the agenda, rezoning 16-5385 for south of Pumpkin Ridge Drive. This is for Falling Water, submitted by Jorgensen Associates. Uh, let's see, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this uh, this project uh, may be familiar to some of you. 
the project has had, uh, has had some attempts to rezone. It's located uh, south of Stonebridge Meadows subdivision and just south and east of the golf course there that you can see. Um, <clears throat> the project was originally in 2005 part of a planned uh, residential plan zoning district known as Falling Waters. That was a uh, 258 residential lots and in, in over 130 acres of property. It had a approximate density of about two units per acre over that site. This property was never developed and uh, the development rights did expire on that one. Uh, the uh, city staff, as you know, has been going through a process of eliminating these projects without zoning or this land without zoning and we, uh, we did uh, bring this forward, I believe, and uh, recommended, um, well, I, you know, that could be incorrect. Is that true, Andrew? Did we bring this one forward originally or was it the applicant that did? We did. They did. did. Okay. Well, the applicant, uh, we were recommending uh, RA, residential, agricultural. The applicant, uh, I don't think, agreed with that. But uh, what we did do was uh, Planning Commission and City Council rezoned this uh, to RA, residential, agricultural. In 2015, just last year, the owner came back and said we'd like to zone for 17 acres of this into RSF2, or two units per acre, uh, approximately uh, twice the density. The Planning Commission denied that request at the time. Uh, the applicant uh, did appeal to City Council, and City Council denied the request as well. Uh, tonight, the property owner is requesting to rezone uh, 35 acres of the same property from RA to RSF2 and has provided a bill of assurance in order to limit the density to 51 single family lots. The uh, 35 acres in, uh, with RSF2 would, uh, or would give them um, um, 70 lots or so. So they're actually reducing that by 19 lots, what's possible, with a bill of assurance. <coughs> Public comment has not been, uh, has not been received by staff, as far as we know, I've had a couple of questions, a few comments. <clears throat> as you can see, this property is is really far on the outside edge of town, uh, primarily agricultural property all around it, some residential to the north, but uh, this is rural, residential, and uh, undeveloped property all the way around. Uh, the city plan 20, uh, 2030 uh, calls this uh, rural residential property. And the goals of those are uh, that, that we really do encourage conservation, very limited development out here, um, <clears throat> preservation of woodlands, grasslands. You can see this is an entirely wooded and very steeply sloped site. And we feel that it's uh, appropriate to have the RA designation on this site. It does allow some development, but uh, it very well meets the uh, future land use plan. The RSF2 designation, even with the Bill of Assurance, we feel is, uh, is in opposition to that goal. Uh, this was a, a property that had formerly been in a, in a little bit highly, uh, well, a residential future land use uh, designation. In 2011, just a few years ago, we decided that that needed to be reduced and that it was not appropriate to put that much density out here. And uh, that is in part informing our, our recommendation tonight. As far as compatibility, uh, in the area, we feel that uh, that density is not necessarily compatible. This is uh, not the development pattern that's typical out there on the edge, as you can see. And we've got large amounts of open pasture. Uh, that hillside there all the way around is treed. Uh, and we feel that the, uh, the RSF2 uh, would not meet that, uh, meet that goal. We don't feel that this uh, is either you know, necessary or justified as well. The property does allow two-acre residential lots. Those are beneficial in a lot of ways in, in areas like this. It does provide development rights, as I noted, um, and it would be more compatible with the adjacent property than, than uh, approximately uh, 17,000 or 18,000 square foot lots out here. Some of these are many, many acres, and um, very few are as, as small as being proposed. <clears throat> so for those reasons, um, we would recommend denial of this, uh, of this zoning request. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Is the applicant here this evening? If you would come forward and state your name for the record and add any more comments you would like. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, Mr. Williams, my name is Robert Rhodes. I'm with the law firm of Hall Estill, and I represent the owners, the Buffington um, 
Development Company, and they are here represented by two of their partners, um, Clay Carlton, wave Mr. Carlton, and Mike Lambreth. And um, I did not represent them at the Planning Commission um, when they were here last year, but I did represent them when they were before the City Council. And so I also, uh, just sort of a, in order for more transparency, I believe I was on the City Council with um, your chairman when we approved this, uh, I think in three readings on one night unanimously, is what I believe the record will show, uh, as, a P as a PZD. And so, you know, if you kind of put yourself, you know, back in that uh, in that um, situation or that uh, that era, 19 or was it 2005? Um, uh, the the owners have owned this property since that time, or actually before that time, and they've been paying on their note that entire time. They also have been um, uh, uh, participated in the, uh, I think to the tune of about a million dollars, in putting the water and the sewer underneath uh, the river, which was a very ex you know, expensive project, and, and, and they contributed to that. Um, the reason they didn't develop it, I think you, you all know, is that you know, the economy turned south and they couldn't. But they maintained um, their ownership of the property and they continued paying, and now they're coming forward for the second time uh, with a little bit different, uh, a little bit different take on what they did the first time. It's it's 35 acres, not 17 acres, and uh, what what uh, a good many of the neighbors um, spoke out against when we were here last year, when we were here, he when we were before the city council and before this body, was in regard to the traffic, which you know my understanding from. Um, seen numerous memos from your city attorney. Traffic is one of the things that is, is, should be considered uh, when you're thinking about doing a rezoning. And the traffic issue seemed to stem from the fact that at that time the plan was to go out the east end of the, uh, uh, where it's stubbed out on Pumpkin, whatever it's called, Pumpkin Road. Um, and there was a lot of question, a lot of desire. And as a matter of fact, I think one of the council members actually said, gosh, I could support this if you would go out the, the other way and go um, do all your construction traffic through Dead Horse Mountain Road. Well, at that particular time, they were only developing and asking to, to rezone the 17 acres that, that was closest to, to um, Pumpkin Road. Now, they've they've expanded it, like I said before, and they can do that, um, that construction access to the, and, and they actually, um, the, the, I'll go a step further, um, they are willing to change their bill of assurance to not only um, what is currently on there, which is um, a limitation to 51 lots or 1.4 per acre, they'll also add that all of the construction traffic will be um, through uh, Dead Horse Mountain. Okay. A um, couple other comments. In looking at the staff report, um, there's just a, on, on page uh, two, I'm sorry. This is in regard to, um, they're talking about uh, the um, RSF4 Stonebridge Meadow is, is um, 400 feet away from this development, but uh, in actuality, it's adjacent to the development. And I guess that's important. I mean, I'm not trying to nitpick the staff's report, except I think it's kind of important because if you look, there is a lot of RSF4. Yeah, it's a golf course. And that, that's a, a big part of the green space. Well, the golf course is going to stay the golf course. But most people that develop a golf course, it's envisioned that it's going to be developed around the course by people that want to live there. And it is uh, RS4 in a number of places. 
I'd also say that in late August of this last year, uh, the plaza um, was approved, and it uh, was 12 acres, 4.7 an acre. And it's further east. And the reason I mention the fact that it's further east is because I think there's probably going to be perhaps some concern about, um, you know, this is sprawl. Well, it's not really. It's really infill because there's these other subdivisions that have already been approved, and I think you can consider this um, infill um, around a golf course. Also, I'd bring your attention to the fact in, in January of 2016, this year, the villas at the Stone Bridge uh, was approved, and uh, that was an RSF-4 uh, with a bill of assurance at 2.5 acres. And so uh, I say all that to tell you that I think it is, um, I think it's w within your authority and I think it, it, it's in your discretion to, you know, to give this an approval and a thumbs up and pass it on to the City Council um, for the reasons that I've mentioned. And with that, um, the, I I'm certainly will stand by for any questions that you may have. And um, one or both of the owners can also um, jump up here and help me as well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Is there anyone from the public that would like to speak for Sonny? Please step forward. State your name for the record, if you would, please. My name is Wanda Altman. I live at 2059 South Cherry Hills Drive. I'm concerned about the environmental impact of this rezoning on this pristine mountainside on the periphery of Fayetteville, and it is on the periphery. I cannot, I'm sorry, I cannot in any way see this as infilling. I mean, you look at what surrounds the property. There is another undeveloped mountain. There's pastures with cows. There's sparsely populated farmland. So it's not infilling by any understanding that I have of the term. It is continuing to develop on the periphery, which flies in the face very much so of the city plan 2030. And I believe that's why that it was uh, turned down by both of the, the governing bodies last time. This one's slightly different. It's been tweaked a little, but it's basically the same. It would be a reversal of city policy, I believe, uh, as far as Plan 2030 to rezone this. And in the matter of uh, compatibility, it simply is not compatible with what's around it. It's currently, the current zoning is compatible with the pastures and the mountainside, and, and, um, but to rezone it would not be compatible. I know that the City Plan 2030 is just a guideline. I've been told that, but I think it's more important than that. I think that since it was unanimously adopted just five years ago by the City Council, it's really a shared vision, a shared plan of all of us, of what we would like the City of Fayetteville to be. And the best way to ruin a city is one decision at a time. Because then really, as we've just heard about some other developments, that development can then be used to justify another development and that one for another one. And where does that end? I mean, I, I don't see an end to that. Um, so this is not just another piece of property. It is a part of what makes Fayetteville a beautifully unique place to live and why many of us have chosen to live here in Fayetteville and specifically out in uh, Stonebridge Meadows and out in that area and along the periphery. We can always turn a pristine mountainside into another housing development, but we can't turn a housing development into a, pr a pristine mountainside. Some decisions are irreversible uh, and it sets a very dangerous precedent, as I've said. It's not just the existing communities there that are being placed at risk, and I believe that they are, 
being placed at risk with flooding issues and, and with the traffic, and I'll uh, speak to that in just a second. But I think it's our whole vision of uh, Fayetteville and the future of Fayetteville that's being placed at risk here. Um, and as to, yes, last time, uh, I think a year ago, maybe less than a year ago, when this proposal was, rezoning proposal was made, uh, it was a huge issue for um, that neighborhood as far as the construction vehicles and all of the traffic being funneled down Cherry Hills Drive. Um, but I know I have here a cover letter from, I guess, um, Mr. Rhodes or Mr. Jorgensen. Um, that says it's the plan to take all construction traffic off of Dead Horse Mountain, but that's not included in the current Bill of Assurance, and I believe the Bill of Assurance is what is legally binding. A cover letter, maybe you can help me out here, someone, but I don't think a cover letter is legally binding. Um, so if this were to be rezoned, I mean, do we have any assurance at all at this point that once it's done and construction starts, that we aren't going to have all this heavy earth-moving equipment and bulldozers and, and dump trucks flying up and down Cherry Hills Drive. Uh, the way it's currently written, I don't think we have that assurance uh, because it's not part of the legally binding bill of assurance. So you know, plans change. Plans change. So that may be the plan, but later on there may be a different plan. It may not be economically feasible. I don't know. But... I just think this is a dangerous precedent. This is so in line with 2030 to keep this at its current zoning, and I would urge you to do that and say no to this rezoning proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. If you would say. Hello, sir. My name is Jay Ray. I live at 2050 South Cherry Hill Drive, and I just want to talk about the flooding. This mountainside, that water comes off this mountain. In the wintertime, I mean, it just rolls over the golf course. Now, we've had six floods since 2005. The brand-new bridge at, at uh, Dead Horse Mountain, brand-new, went over this year. Also, the bridge on Black Oak, which is the backside coming off of Armstrong, it also flooded and was closed down. One road open, Roberts Road. There's no improvements been made, and it has five-foot drops on the side. There's no shoulder. The water is going to just ruin this place, I'm telling you. I mean, I've played golf up there a lot, and when it rains, those streams are running down, and luckily the golf course catches most of it right now, but can you imagine all the asphalt roads and the housing, how fast the water is going to run? Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, my name is Gregory Carter, and I also live in Stonebridge Meadows. Uh, and uh, the concern that I have is, I echo their concerns, and another concern that I have is our traffic has gotten better coming out of there. They put a stop signal in. I'm just worried about it. it, 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 it it's, it's when, if you have to get out of there at 8 o'clock, I try, luckily I'm retired, I can plan everything after, after 9 o'clock. But if you have to get out of there at 8 o'clock, it's a nightmare. <coughs> Having this much more traffic coming in, the uh, uh, even if they go the dead horse, they're going to go to that stoplight. And if they, I, 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 I am very happy that they've decided to do the dead horse. Before, I was really against this because it would have put such an influx of traffic to our community, and the construction traffic would have just devastated us. And, but I still, I still feel for the flooding issue, the uh, traffic issue, and the city plan. Uh, and thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Larry Altman from 2059 uh, South Cherry Hills Drive. I, I feel like we're really beating a dead horse mountain here. Um, we stood up uh, and argued all of these issues time and time again when uh, the developers appealed to the city council after this body's decision that it was, did not fit in with the current 2030 plan. All of the issues that we've talked about before, that we brought up before, uh, are still there. Uh, this proposal is really not that much different than what the developers were proposing before, except this time they're wanting to, to, develop, to, to develop 35 acres rather than 17 acres. 
And the bill of assurance, you know, really all it states is that we are only going to uh, we are only going to build 50 lots or 50 houses on this particular plot of ground. But as I argued to the city council before, not quite a year ago, it seems to me that this is just a way of slow rolling the city council and that their intention is to continue to develop this property until all of the, the land is developed if they do get the rezoning. Yes, they are saying in this bill of assurance that we'll only build 50 houses on the 35 acres. But what's to say that they wouldn't come back after this has been built, you know, and ask for rezoning of the, the rest of the property that they own out there? Again, um, as my wife stated, this is a pristine piece of property uh, on a mountainside on the edge of Fayetteville. And if you look up there, city plan 2030, goal number two is we will discourage suburban sprawl. And as I argued to the city council previously, this is um, really uh, suburban sprawl at its finest. And uh, for those reasons and lots of others, um, I really encourage you to stick with your previous decision to uh, disapprove this rezoning request. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alton. Anyone else in the public want to comment? Okay. Seeing that, I'll bring it back to the commission. Um, Mr. Williams, will you comment on the bill of assurance since that was one of the questions? That, um, I guess there was a comment about Mr. Rhodes brought up the point of they would add redirecting the traffic, but obviously if it's not in our current bill of assurance, we can't hold them to that. Uh, as I said, I think you are correct. Uh, until it's actually in the signed bill of assurance, uh, you can't rely <laughs> upon it. Uh, letters and stuff like that don't make any difference, so that uh, the applicant would actually have to submit an amended bill of assurance that would include uh, where the construction traffic is going to be limited to, and until that happens, that's not something we can rely upon. Um, the other thing I should mention, though, that uh, I don't think uh, I've not been able to find any uh, mention of drainage as an issue in zoning. Uh, they mentioned traffic, which is certainly the courts have talked about that, and, and there are many other things, compatibility, uh, stuff like that. But drainage is something really that's handled during development itself. Obviously, an owner of a property is not required to cure somebody else's drainage problem. We try to ensure through our regulations that drainage is not worsened, but we cannot require uh, a landowner to fix a problem that really is not their problem. It's a problem of how the land is lying and, and what happens when you have a big storm. So even though I know that drainage is a big issue here for this neighborhood, uh, it's really not an issue for you all in deciding a rezoning request. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Austin. Uh, wow. Uh, you know, we, we often have people come and, and, and speak about, you know, why they disapprove of this or that development, you know, in their backyard. Uh, I, get those, I get those phone calls a lot. I don't think I'm, and, and every time I get that phone call from somebody, I say, uh, I, I understand your concerns and, and please try to frame your comments in, in terms of the of City Plan 2030. And in the, in the short amount of time that I've been on this, this commission, I don't think I've ever heard someone frame, if someone do that more effectively than uh, Ms. Altman just did. I don't, I mean, I, I, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to add on to her comments. Uh, I'm afraid I won't do as good of a job as you just did. Uh, but but let me let me speak to a, a, a couple of things. I, I, I we we are discouraging suburban sprawl, and and I, and I think that a lot of people have a tendency to see that as as purely pro urbanism, you know, um, and that's that's kind of the, the the sexy development part of this uh, that we tend to talk about here. We tend to talk about you know traditional town form and and great streets and. Uh, how this building, you know, deals with the pedestrian scale and, and, and whatnot, but, but really discouraging suburban sprawl is every bit as much about being pro-country as it is pro-urban. Uh, 
and, and so I, I really ap appreciated the, the, the comments of, of the, the few people that, that spoke that uh, discussed the, the unique identity, the, the kind of rural co culture that exists actually very close to downtown Fayetteville. Uh, I mean, it, this is, it's, it's, it's kind of astounding how easy it is for, you know, those of us that live downtown to, to be in just absolutely gorgeous surroundings in, in minutes. And, and I, I'm, I'm someone that, um, you know, I went to high school briefly in, in Houston. I, I very much understand what the other side of that coin looks like. I'm very thankful that, that we have all of these goals. And I, I'm uh, not going to be voting in support of this rezoning request. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman. Mr. Chair? Ms. Quinlan. Um, I'd like to comment on uh, the existing zoning code, um, specifically that the agricultural district is designed to prevent wasteful scattering, and this is from, from the intent of the code, wasteful scattering of development in rural areas and obtain economy of public funds and the providing of public improvements and services. And I think this is one of those perfect projects that counter to both of those goals in the existing zoning, and uh, so I think is inappropriate for rezoning. I think it both is suburban sprawl against our 2030 plan, um, and <coughs> is certainly not uh, in keeping with our protection of rural areas. I think I also agree with the staff report, um, and I appreciate the thoughtfulness on that, but um, the publicly maintained sewer, water, and roads that are going to be added to this project and then added to city responsibility are going to represent an incredible cost to the rest of Fayetteville to maintain um, scat, you know, the scattered services for these 50 houses. And I think the incredible cost of that to the rest of the city um, is not justified. So I will also not be in support of this reason. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Hoskins. Well, I can see I'm going to be on the other side of this fight. <laughs> uh, first question for staff. Is this property in HHOD? Yes. This? OK. Um, well, I'm all about the City 2030 plan. I'll make the same comment now as I made earlier tonight. One size fits all doesn't work. There's different parts of town that that can handle something besides urban form. Um, we also need to remember this property is zoned RA, residential agriculture. Now, I don't know who's going to raise cows up there on that hill, but it's within their right to do just that. Of course, they don't need so many trees if they're raising cows up there. There's been a lot of money spent on this property, and we chose as a city to put that border where we put it, okay? The, the suburban sprawl thing, that ship has sailed. It's already there. This is a golf course. One of the things around a golf course is high density. That's, that's one of the attractions to a golf course. Everybody wants to live on a golf course put as many houses on as possible. Um, the, uh, uh, um, it makes sense to have density out there. And plus, you know, so the reason we have sprawl is because everybody has to get in their car and drive a long distance to get services, be it gas, food, whatever. And um, well, we've got 15th Street out there, and we keep saying, boy, we'd really like to have some commercial out there. We'd like to have some infill out there. And I think something, I think Come and Go was going to go out there, and I don't even know where that project is now. But, but the one thing that commercial has to have to come there is rooftops. That's one of the things that's required, or commercial's not coming. If commercial doesn't come, you have sprawl. And so it makes sense to me. In fact, it makes sense to me to develop this property at a higher density than RSF2. I'm surprised that that's all they're asking for. Um, you know, not so long ago, we approved a PCD on this project. Um, we had the city, I guess we had the city plan 2025 then, but the goals weren't that much different at that time. This is in the city limits. It's not farmland up on this hill. It makes sense to develop it. They've invested a ton of money. Um, you know, we can't put every house in Fayetteville on flat land. Um, we have hills in this town, and, and sometimes we're going to have to put houses on hills. Um, you know, these folks have as much right to develop their property as the people down the flat down below develop their property. Um, You know, the, uh, um, I think before one of the issues was uh, the connection uh, as far as the construction traffic off of Dead Horse Mountain Road. Well, they obviously cured that. Um, 
And if this zoning was approved, I'm, I'm sure, you know, even I would want some kind of a, uh, some kind of a, a being rest assured that, that the construction would come, would come off Dead Horse Mountain Road. That seemed to be one of the biggest issues before. Eventually, and correct me if I'm wrong, but eventually this neighborhood will be tied through all the way from, uh, was it Pumpkin Ridge to Dead Horse Mountain Road? Will it eventually be tied together? Just to wait and see what the what development happens. There is a plane collector street um, traversing out to, to the east of the site. Okay, so so if those are connected together, basically what that does is that gives the neighborhood that exists there another way out. So you would think that it might actually help traffic conditions a little bit. Um, anyway, I have no problem with with the uh, RSF2 zoning, with or without the limitation of the bill of assurance. Uh, I think it's appropriate. Again, you can't build every house in the flat, and like I said, the the houses have already started out there. It's on a golf course. The density makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Brown, uh, we need to support the 2030 plan. There is a logic to what the 2030 plan says about this property. It's on the edge of town, on the transect. You have lower density leading into higher density. It, the plan also uses the rural residential area as a means to encourage the conservation and preservation of sensitive, uh, important environmental features. And we have one there. Uh, this, this property would be on the side of Dead Horse Mountain we have designated an overlay uh, hillside, hilltop overlay district to also protect it. Um, it does permit large lot residential development, but as you get to the higher densities, because of the severe slopes, and the hydrologic soil characteristics, as soon as you remove those trees, you're going to increase the erosion potential. Um, and we're using the, we're not, we're not trying to fix a problem. The master plan is trying to avoid a problem. And it has, uh, designated, it does recognize the the, the uh, characteristics of this land, and that that it needs to stay a lower density residential large lot to reduce the uh, um, to preserve the forested hillside and to reduce the amount of runoff that could be generated by increasing the densities. So uh, I feel uh, that uh, things haven't changed that much since that's been my major concern when we first looked at it. And it still remains that with looking at adding 51 houses on the side of that, that hillside. So I, I, would, I don't think I'll be able to support uh, this rezoning. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Hoskins. Uh, when the HHOD came around, I, I was very involved in that at the time. And while I didn't see the, the uh, absolute final draft of it or what have you, the intent of the HHOD was to do exactly what, what uh, Commissioner Brown just said, and that was to, to promote responsible development on hillsides so that you didn't have the runoff problems, so that you didn't have the erosion problems or what have you. Um, there's, that's a whole other set of regulations that outside of the, of the zoning of this property uh, that they're going to have to contend with. Um, so I don't personally see that as a very valid argument. Um, again, you know, I don't think the intent of the HHOD um, was to prevent people from building uh, 
on hillsides. At least that's what I was told when I was going through, so I hope that's still the case. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Ms. Brown. Yeah. Uh, the hillside ordinance, I'm using it in my comments as a indication of the valuable nature of that environmental resource, that Horse Mountain and that forested hillside. I, 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 that's the context that I use that I referred to it. I realize that that is there to control development in that area and if that's the direction of the, the council, the, 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 uh, the commission that we would you know, approve the rezoning, I would, I would sleep a little bit better knowing that we do have that hillside, you know, requirement uh, in hilltop uh, ordinance to help guide the eventual development. But uh, again, I was not using it as uh, that comment was more uh, recognizing the importance of that uh, that mountaintop and mountainside environmental plan, that's how it realizes that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Let me, do you mind if I ask a question Please real quick, Mr. Autry? So, Mr. Garner, there was a discussion of that, briefly, of that collector street that runs over to Hunt Lane. Mm -hmm. Would this, I know we're talking about a rezoning here and not development, but potentially would that collector street be part of this development? I, I know we're conjecturing here, I know, but it, look, it does go across a part, of the, a part of the property, so we would just have to evaluate that when the development comes through. Um, but um, there's definitely a, a chance that, that would come through and potentially stub out to the east to allow that future connection over to Hunt. Okay. It's just a possibility. Yeah. Right. Okay, thank you. Mr. Autry. Uh, the only difference, and I posed this the, uh, the first time, and the, the major difference is we would double the amount of acreage and uh, more than double the, the 50 potential homes here, that issue. And I know we cannot consider drainage. It's not their problem to fix. But you can't ignore it either because it's going to be there. Uh, I've all been on that course before too, and sometimes uh, you can't even walk across it. You're just kind of scudding back the hillside a little bit for the development. It will be that much more drainage, uh, erosion potential, and. Uh, when you're adding twice the number of homes in a potential plan, uh, I can't really support it again this time around, and it's possibly not the place for our infill uh, item here on our 2030 plan. So I will continue my denial of this request. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any more thoughts? Motions? Mr. Chair. Mr. Hoffman. Move that we deny RZN 16-5385. Second. Okay. I have a motion from Mr. Hoffman and a second from Ms. Quinlan. Right. Is there any more discussion? Mr. Chair. Yes. Mr. Isn't Mr. this uh, forwarding with the recommendation recommendation of the You are correct. Thank you for no, saying that. Not oh, actually, it's not. It's uh, they can appeal. If oh, 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 or you can forward it. Right it's a denial. Thank you. Scratch that last question, Mr. Uh, Chair. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm easily confused this evening, so that works good. <laughs> good afternoon. <laughs> okay. Uh, with no more discussion, Mr. Garner, we call roll. Double. No. Delby. Yes. Autry. Yes. Hoskins. There's a motion to deny. Correct. 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 No. Quinlan? Yes. Brown? Yes. Cook? Yes. Hoffman? Yes. Eldon? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. That is all of our agenda this evening. Um, I did have one question for the commissioners real quick while we're here. So on the active transportation committee there has to be a planning commissioner sit on that I have been sitting on it but I was wondering if somebody else would want to sit on that what, what, could you it's the old sidewalk and trails committee but it's now it's called active transportation committee how often do they meet um, quarterly roughly I mean, I do that. I mean.
We have to get everybody on back out. Wow, <laughs> our papers have been very covered in position, I suppose. Uh, I think it's good that somebody from Planning Commission represent that because uh, they do. Of course it is. Uh, it's good for when you're up here and you kind of see what the big plan is. It helps. So um, I'll just have uh, Matt Mihalovich. All right, who, who wants a shot at it? <laughs> You could take, I guess we could do it. We could take turns soon, or you can just go. But I'll have Matt throw you all on the email list. Hey, I think it's a seniority thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You're the old guy? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I mean, just a month ago, but I'd love to do it, but draw straws or something. I don't care. All right, we'll figure it out. We don't have to figure it out this second, but we'll figure it out. So, I'm glad that everybody's interested. So that's good. I have a couple of more, a couple of announcements. Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. The city is undertaking a master transportation plan. Um, it'll be over the next two years. Um, the planning commission will be involved in that as well. And our first step in that would be a work session um, following our next agenda session. So please attend the next planning commission agenda session. It will just have a working session with some of the staff project management to kind of. Um, you know, inserting ourselves into that process. And we also have a subdivision committee this Thursday, team number three, Hoffman, Selby, and Quinlan uh, are on for 9 o'clock. Okay. Thank you. We're adjourned.